So in case you've just joined in, I'm Ag Stevens. I'm the Head of Partnerships at CEDA. And I'm going to be talking about a, um, an exciting new service that, that we've launched within the last year. Um, I, I want to particularly name check um, my colleague, Matt Pryor, who's um, done a, a lot of hard work to make this happen, and, and a number of colleagues in, in SCD, um, the Scientific Computing Department, have helped bring this together. So um, some of you will know all about Jupyter Notebooks um, and what they are. Um, but if you don't, this is the talk to give you an introduction to those things. And then I'm going to talk specifically about the Jasmine Notebook service. So why should you use our service rather than others? And then I'm just going to highlight some of the particularly useful features about the Jasmine service, as well as one or two of the limitations of it. So coming back to how this fits in in the bigger picture, um, we have a little box here in our, in our interactive compute section of our compute services. So at the moment, many of you will log into the SI servers and do different types of interactive work. The notebook service is an alternative, um, inter alternative platform or environment for you to be able to work with and do very similar things. Um, and we'll see why, why it's similar and why it's also different. So what is a Jupyter Notebook? So on the left here, slightly too small for you to be able to see, is a little screenshot of a Jupyter Notebook. You've got all these cells and within cells, you've got um, some kind of what looks like Python code. And you've also got some sort of um, bit, bits of just comment in between, but they're, they're rendered nicely. Okay, so Jupyter Notebook is an interactive programming environment. And the beauty of it is that it runs in a web browser. So it could be running in Chrome, Safari, Firefox, etc. cetera. And no, a, a notebook allows you to define, edit and run code interactively. So in our case, this is Python code. It allows you to embed, so to create, first create and then embed visualizations and comments within your code to demonstrate what it does. So it's a bit like, in one way, it's a bit like something like a lab book that you're, um, you're able to write down what you're doing, why you're doing it, and show, and actually then execute the code itself. Um, so yeah, you can document things as you go. And one of the real strengths about notebooks is that you can package them up, put them on um, open repositories such as GitHub, and share them with a wider community. And there's some really good in integrations with GitHub that allow you to actually run notebooks on free cloud services directly out of a GitHub repository. So one really good way to have a look at what a notebook is, is to actually see one in action. And so here's one I've prepared earlier, and hopefully it will load, and we can just have a look at it. So I've got a few tabs here showing different Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook sessions, and these are running at notebooks.jasmine.ac.uk, which is our Jasmine Notebook service. So as you can see, there are each of these individual cells. I'm typing into them, and it's as if I'm running Python interactively. So I can just write simple commands like print. I can do bas basic arithmetic. But this is great. I can even import um, externally defined modules and libraries. So I've imported math here and I've accessed math.py. And actually we can get even more complex. So we can define variables. So I'm defining um, zero, the, the um, value in Celsius of, sorry, in, in Kelvin of zero degrees Celsius. And now I'm defining my own function where I'm gonna use that um, particular variable. So I define a function called convert temp and it takes one input and it does a very simple bit of mathematics. Having defined that, I can call it. So I sent the value zero into it and I can do that very simply. So we've got this really nice interactive environment. So we can save these things, we can use them, we can share them. But here's another really nice aspect of Jupyter Notebooks. You can create plots. And it's again, as though you're running Python interactively, this is actually sending everything off to a server that's doing all the work, but it's feeding back in real time. So we can create a very simple plot here. 
so that so that's you know it's it's a nice bit of functionality it's not very pretty let's see if we can do something slightly more interesting so we can also on the jasmine service we can read files that are actually held in the cedar archive or that are held on group workspaces and also we've got access to a wider range of um, software so x-ray here is imported from a jaspy environment i was talking about earlier on and we can say we want to open this particular cmip6 file i'll just pause for a moment and just take us back there so this this cmip6 file which is in the cedar archive a netcdf file so we want to open this we're looking at surface temperature and so we use x-ray to open that using x-rays open data set and we can display what's in there so we can see information about the the data itself the coordinates all the global attributes in the netcdf file and actually we can go one step further so we're interested in selecting a 2d layer from this and then actually plotting it and being able to view the plot interactively within our notebook so first of all we do some selection in time on this particular data set um, so I, I actually i've already understood what the time dimension was in here so i know that there is a, a um a valid time value in the year 999 15th of, of december and i've squeezed out that layer so the layer is just a two-dimensional lat long um, array and then here we can just call layer.plot so this is um, x-ray talking to matplotlib and we get a nice little graphical plot here okay so that's a very quick introduction to what a notebook is so what's special about the jasmine jupyter notebook service so one of the, one of the things is that it's been released very recently you've been talking to us for years about could we do this and finally we've done this in a way that is secure and scalable and, and we're very pleased with the, the results so far. So this is built using Docker containers um, and they deploy a notebook server per user. So each user has their own um, fenced off space that they have access to, um, which is completely separate from any other users. And this is available to all Jasmine users. So anyone can sign up for it if you have a Jasmine login account. And it's an alternative programming environment um, compared to logging in by SSH. You can access it from any browser. Um, and we've got Jaspi installed, so data analysis libraries already installed, and it connects to the Jasmine file system. So all of those are really reasons why you, sh you might consider using the Jasmine service rather than any other service. So when you log in, you're automatically in your home directory, which is shared with your um, Jasmine SSH. Um, it, that, when you log in via SSH, you've got access to the same home directory. So you can read directly from the slash VADC and slash NEODC archives. So these large parts of the CEDAR archive, if you have access to them in an SSH session, you have the same access through a notebook. You can read from group workspaces that you have access to. You can't write to those at this point in time, but you can read from them. And then we have the common software. And we also have advice on our help pages that explain how you can um, add new packages to an existing environment. So if you need to install a few extra Python packages, there are ways of doing that. So as I demonstrated in the example, we can read from slash BADC and here we're just show, showing that we can list the directory and see what's in there. In the second example, I'm saying I'm actually calling out to the shell with this exclamation mark and that shows me all the groups that my user has access to. Because I'm a CEDAR member of staff, I have access to way too many groups here. Um, but that shows me I can access the CMIP6 prep um, group workspace and then I can list that and find out what's there. So it's really useful that you can access data directly on the file system on Jasmine. About a minute, Ag, sorry. I Thank you. Minute. Um, so we've got this batteries included approach. So this is about having Jaspi environments already available to you. Um, and you can also build your own virtual environments within Jaspi um, to extend them if you need to. 
one of the really nice things about notebooks is that you can share code. So as I said, it integrates really nicely with GitHub and you can potentially share and even run those notebooks um, via a GitHub extension on cloud services. Um, it's important to know that if notebooks are, um, they, they will only run correctly in other places if they've been configured with the required software and also if they have access to the data. Um, just to mention that there are potentials for this to be used by the community in different ways. So potentially it could be used for webinars and, webinars and training activities. Um, and we're finding already they're really useful as ways of sharing information about analyzing and working on seeded data. Um, and just to mention very briefly that there are some limitations. Um, so at the moment, there's only one JASP environment installed. As I said, you cannot write to group workspaces. Um, and by design, this service does not integrate with the Lotus Batch cluster. So it's more about interactive, um, interactive compute rather than batch compute. And there's some useful links there you can follow up with um, if you get copies of the slides. Thank you very much.